scale, we decide sustainable land use intensity. Okay. Understand? Do you understand? Yes or no? Nobody replied to me. <clears throat> Are you there? Can we continue? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, the second part of my lecture here. The urban land use actions in different countries or regions. Let's check USA, European countries, Japan, and Hong Kong in China, and also Beijing in China. Okay, first USA. In US, the land use inside a city, especially along a bus line or railway line, the utilization type. Development intensity and indispensable environment infrastructure. For example, for example, the parking lots. For example, the green land of each plot of the land in the block are strictly ruled and regulated according to corresponding laws. And different cities, different states in America, they have different laws, but、uh, somehow similar. Okay, to regulate the utilization time, utilization intensity, and indispensable environment infrastructure for each block, for each plot, plot of a block. Okay, as a result, comprehensive transport planning gets accurate support for both transport infrastructure, construction, and operation work. Let's check. For example, the basic types of land uses in different cities in in America. For New York, they have the basic types of land uses as the residential land use, commercial land use, industrial land use. For Chicago, residential, commercial, and business in the industrial, urban, central. Portland, open space, residential, commercial, employment, and industrial. For the Washington D.C., is commercial,、uh, residential, special purposes. Commercial, residential, commercial, industrial, water side. Okay, San Francisco, open space, residential, commercial, industrial, commercial in neighborhood, multi-purposes, Mission Bay. What is Mission Bay? I will explain later. You can see in different cities in America, they have different types, different basic types of land uses. For each type of land use, utilization type. For each plot of、uh, of the land in the block, they have the laws to regulate how big, what is the intensity, okay, according to the transport capacity or public travel mode in this area, okay. For example, many types of residential lands in U.S. This is independent villa, platoon villa. Semi-independent villa, residential platoon, apartment. This is also another apartment. You see, here is one example of the regulation of the law about the land use development. Okay, requirements to development of intensities of residential lands in D.C. In Washington D.C., if you're rich, you buy a piece of land, and then you want to have a dormitory. For residential, and then you need to follow these requirements. If you build the villa, then the height will be forty feet at most. If you build a residential platoon, residential platoon like this, okay, Res this one, sorry, this one, and then the height forty feet or lower. Apartment, low density apartment, forty feet or lower. At the same time, upper limit of floor space divided by land area should be smaller than zero point nine. Okay, apartment, moderate density apartment, smaller than one point eight, 
and no higher than 60 feet. Okay, apartment, this type or this type, 90 feet high, 90 feet high or lower. And this one, upper limit of floor space divided by land area, no bigger than 3.5, no bigger than 6.0. What does it mean? According to the public transport capacity, for example, the metro station around or bus stop around, according to their capacities, the layers the building has, okay, has the top number. Okay, you can never build a building, for example, for residential, higher, higher, higher as you like. Okay, higher building means much layers and more rooms. You can rent these rooms to have more money for the rents. And then, sorry, no. If you have too high building or this one, Two more rooms means too many people here, but we have only, for example, one bus stop around. No, the transport capacity is not enough. Okay, can you understand this one? America, utilization type, development intensity, and indispensable environment infrastructure of each plot of the land in the block are strictly ruled and regulated according to corresponding laws. This law decides these requirements according to the transport capacity of a station, of a public transport station around. Okay, or it will be too many people here. They will all walk out. They need, will to go to somewhere, but we don't have adequate public transport capacity. Okay, this is case one one case in U.S. Okay, just now I have also mentioned here <clears throat> indispensable environmental infrastructure, including parking lots. Okay, if you are rich, if you are rich in U.S., you buy a a plot of a land. And then you, 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 you build another building. Okay, at the same time, you need to understand that in New York, around your building, you need to have specialized off-road parking space. You need to have permitted off-road parking space around. You need to have the limits to location parking space. You need to have utilizing and renting parking space. You need to have sporting facilities of parking space. For Chicago, two more. Parking space sharing contract. Bicycle parking space strands. DC, something different. San Francisco, similar to DC. Portland, similar to San Francisco. Okay? These are the independent environment infrastructure. If the public trail mode transport capacity is not enough, and then you want to build this building, Okay, you you have gathered you you will gather the, this as many people as this. Okay, then you also need this parking space. Okay, as many as possible, or your building will not be allowed to construct. Okay, uh, just now I have mentioned the Mission Bay. It is a very special land use type in San Francisco in U.S. Uh, what does it mean? It's a, it's a kind of a special urban area. Some details of the requirements are modified and all new requirements are put forward according to special environment. As for the Mission Bay, in fact, in San Francisco, it's a lagoon nest hole inside about 500 acres of salt marsh and acquired by year-round tidal waters. This one and this one, Mission Bay. Okay, this area is a natural habitat and a refugee for large, large waterfall populations, including ducks, geese, herons, adrenals of springs and gulls. If you want to have a building like uh, in, inside this area, 
you need to consider the protection of these seabirds. Okay, not too high, not too very intensive. Okay, a very very special land use type in San Francisco. You see, in different cities, they have different where land use types, land use divisions. Okay, and the different requirements of the indispensable environment infrastructure, or the requirements of the size, type, and intens intensity of your building. Okay, very strict law. If you construct your your building without considering these well, factors, sorry your building will be destroyed and then you'll be prosecuted okay <clears throat> this is us let's go to uk in uk well situations are a little different about the urban land use requirements okay the land use planning in uk is characterized by planning and at a national regional county and the local levels Okay, this is UK, uh, consisting of four parts, England, Scotland, Wales, and the North Ireland. Okay, national and regional levels means various acts in, are implemented in, react, in relatively independent in England, Scotland, Wales, and North Ireland. In these four parts, there were different laws about the urban land use. Okay, and... Uh, in England and Wales, they have the down. They have the Town and the Country Planning Act in uh, from nineteen ninety, and for the Scotland, they have the Scot Town Scotland Town and the Country Planning Act in nineteen ninety seven, North Ireland Planning Act in from nineteen ninety one. Okay, uh, similar to the case in U.S., but uh, a little different for these four parts. Okay. <clears throat> At the county and the local levels, okay, planning at county level is also called structure planning. County planning are elaborated by local planning. Okay. This is the case in UK, similar to US. For US, each city has its law about the urban land use. In UK, each area has its laws about the urban land use. And for each area, they have county and local levels where laws, regulations about urban land use. Okay. Japan. It's a developed country in Asia. In the late 19th century, the urban land use planning in Japan starts from Tokyo area, uh, Tokyo urban area correction regulations enacted in 1888. Okay. Originally, it's only for the fire prevention in urban area and back uh, urban landscape in 19th century Japan. Because at that time, most of the buildings in Japan were made of ooze. Okay. But later, for the Tokyo urban area, correction regulations uh, regulates that organizations of planning and completion execution of land use a proper process of urban planning and source collection utilization of funds for urban construction based on urban planning. Okay, first, who can have the land use development and who approved that and where is the money from according to this law, Tokyo Urban Area Correction Regulation. This is a law, okay? In 1888, they have such regulations, okay? Who has the privilege, who has the rights to have the urban land use development and who will approve and where is the money from, okay? <clears throat> In the early 20th century, Urban Planning Act, which is based on Tokyo Urban Area Correction Regulations was enacted in 1919. Here we have five breakthroughs uh, from 
Tokyo Urban Area Correction Reg Regulations into Urban Planning Act, clarifying the concept of urban planning area. If we want to have the urban planning, uh, we need to have the border. And this new law has the clearance, clearance of the planning like this. Okay. The second introduced the viewpoint of urban planning control. Control what? Mainly control the size of uh, of a city center. Remember, I told you, nineteen nineteen, about one hundred years earlier than ours. Okay, so from this perspective, we need to know that no matter China or Pakistan, we are still developing country. Until today, China has no such a law. We, we are still developing countries. We, we still have a lot of things to do, especially for the regulations of laws for about the urban land use development. Okay. The third breakthroughs uh, in 1919 in Japan about the urban land use is the implementing urban planning techniques. They have the mathematical modeling to forecast the passenger flows, to forecast the, the, the car drivings, like that. Okay. The fourth, establishing land acquisition approaches. The fifth, creating beneficiary burden system. In other words, if if you have a piece of land in the city in Japan, you leave it there. Sorry, you need to pay money to the government every year. In other words, you need to earn money from this land. Do not leave it there. Okay, if you don't pay money, pay tax to the government. Sorry, after several years, this land will belong to the government, not yours. Okay? <clears throat> to avoid idle lands. The Urban Planning Act enacted in 1990 basically solved the planning problems in the process of transferring agricultural lands to urban lands. The modern concept of urban planning in Japan came into preliminary form in, uh, from 1919. Okay, the urban planning legislation system in Japan was initially established. The third uh, stage of the urban land use development laws or regulations is 1960s. Okay, new urban planning act was enacted in 1968, and here uh, there were new breakthroughs. Well, first. Local governments lead their urban planning. Before this time, who has the urban planning rights is a little chaos. Okay, from this time, it's clear local governments. Local governments lead that. Okay. The second, citizens participate in planning, completion, and validation. This is the second breakthroughs. Citizens participate in this planning. Third, license urbanization improvement and control. Okay, if you want to have the urban land development, then you need to be licensed. Okay, a big company, or you have adequate, you have enough techniques, you have enough money, you have enough experience, and then you have the right to have the development. Okay. The fourth, clarify detailed classification of land uses. I don't know the case in your country. Do you have your land use type classification like this in your country? I think you have. But you, you can you recall from which year you have such well, classification of land uses in the city? Can you tell me? Hello? About 1980 or 90, or how about in Pakistan? Such classification of land use types in the city. 
Hello? In big cities. Yes, in big cities you have. I'm sure you have. From which year? <laughs> no idea. Okay. Hmm, I think it's a little late than this time. I'm sure. In China, we have such classification only in capital. Wow. Yes. 1960 onwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In China, we have such classification in 1990s. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and this, this law about the urban land use development um, has another improvement in 1980s and 1990s. Okay. <clears throat> Detailed concerns about local planning were added in the new Urban Planning Act. In 1990 and 1992, the new Urban Planning Act was revised again. Main revisions are as follows. First, make more detailed classification of land uses. Very detailed. Okay. Enrich the types and the contents of local planning. 2002, it has been updated, especially for capital city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe similar time with China. Yeah. But in US, very early time. In UK, also very early. Thanks for the update. Okay, thank you. In Japan, in 1960s. In China, and in Pakistan, I think after 1990. Yes. The third point is very important. Initially proposed the concept of integrated planning. Remember this time point. In 1990 and 1992, Japanese initially proposed the concept of integrated planning. What is integrated planning? Planning of transportation is not only planning transportation. We need to, at the same time, plan the land use. At the same time, plan the urban form. At the same time, even plan the environment protection and economic development. This is called integrated planning. Okay. <clears throat> the fourth, improve utilization of land, idle lands. Idle lands, I have explained before. Okay. Never leave one piece of land there. Of course, you need to pay to the government every year. If you cannot earn enough money from the land you have, then you don't have the right to own your land at all. Okay? <clears throat> the urban infrastru infrastructure construction and urban expansion finished at this stage in 1990s. Okay? And the urban planning started to focus on livable environment and the rational controlling land uses. Okay? This is the uh, picture taken in 1980. This is 1990. Okay. Now the land use in Japan, urban land use development in Japan, were well, somehow stopped. Cause uh, for several decades development. Okay. They have completed what they should do. Now they they are focusing on the environment improvement, the natural environment and the social environment. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, let's go to the mainland part of China. We have such land use characteristic uh, classification from 1990s. But all types of the urban land uses are divided into more detailed subtypes. However, the documents about the classification of the urban land uses in mainland of China are themselves do not have the force of laws. This is the biggest problem. I don't know the case in your country. How about the case in your country? The documents about the land use <clears throat> in your country, is it a law or not? If it is a law, then you can regulate the land use type, the land use scale, the land use intensity, especially along a road, along a railway line, 
around a rail metro station. In other words, <clears throat> if you want to build a very, very, very tall building for commercial near a metro station, sorry, no, you cannot, because the metro station cannot afford, they can, it cannot provide adequate transport service, no. The law will strictly prevent that case. But in China, for example, in Beijing, I have shown you some pictures in the morning peak hour. Too many people are waiting for metro trains. This is why. We have the regulations. We have the classifications of land use around each uh, <clears throat> metro station, but they're not laws. They have no strict regulations. If you want to develop this piece of land, you can build taller, taller, and taller buildings. Of course, you can sell as many rooms as you can and earn as much money as you can. But this will do harm to the public transport. How about the case in your country? Do you have such regulation as a law or not? Is it strictly executed? Hello? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Similar. We're brothers. <laughs> We're brothers. <laughs> we have similar problems. Now we are first facing up to such a uh, defect, and uh, we are making effort, very big effort, to change this. But... Uh, well, it's a pity. We still have time. We need, still need time uh, to have these regulations about the land use as a law and uh, very strict executions. Then it will prevent the very bad behaviors about the extreme development of land use or leave the land there. Okay? It will do harm. In other words, make the train full of passengers too full or se only several passengers inside one train. Okay? Okay. Moreover, uh, there have been no regulations about the utilization, such as development intensity of various types of land users under different circumstances in mainland of China. Okay? I think this is not only the problems in China and Pakistan. As in most of the developing countries, we have the similar problems, especially for the urban land use development regulations. Okay. Okay, uh, urban land use actions in different countries and regions. U US, UK, Japan, and mainland of China. Okay. What's the problem of ours? We need to improve, okay? If we don't solve these issues, our transportation can never become sustainable. Remember that? Land use decide transport. Transport reinforce the characteristics of land use, okay? They interact each other. The third part, land use is along urban rail transit lines. I think most of you are officers in railway companies. Let's see, let's see the experiences in Japan, in Europe, and in Hong Kong of China. How can they get the well, rational land use along the railway lines to have the Sustainable development of the cities, the sustainable development of the railway lines, okay? First, let's check the case in Japan. This is Japan, okay? And uh, there were three metropolitan areas. Tokyo metropolitan area, Nagoya metropolitan area, Kyoto, Kobe, Osaka metropolitan areas, okay? These three metropolitan areas have over 70%, over 70% of the population in Japan. And they have the B 
biggest rail transport networks in the world within such a well narrowed land. And the, the main rail transport companies in Japan, you can see they call it the JR, means Japan Railway. JR companies originating from the privatization of Japanese National Railway in 1987. Now, JR company totally has seven. Uh, JR Hokkaido, JR East Japan, uh, Hokkaido, sorry, as Japanese, <laughs> Hokkaido Railway Company, East Japan Railway Company, Central Japan Railway Company, West Japan Railway Company, Shikoku Railway Company, Kyushu Railway Company. These six railway companies are passenger railway transport company. And another one, JR Freight Railway Company. These six passenger transport company are responsible for the passenger transport in different part of Japan. JR Freight Railway Company is responsible for the freight transport, railway freight transport in the whole area of Japan. This is a case of the railway operation in Japan. <clears throat> JR companies complete the passenger transport on main intercity railway lines, including Shinkansen, the high-speed train. This one, this one, and this one. This one uh, is not used today. It is the first generation of Shinkansen. Uh, now in Japan, this one, Nozomi and Hikari, they use this and this <clears throat> with a top speed of 320 kilometers per hour. In China, we have the high-speed train about uh, uh, two, two types. One is 250 kilometers per hour. Another one is uh, 350 kilometers per hour. And these are the common trains in Japan. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Uh, this one is a semi, well, high-speed train with a speed of 160 kilometers per hour. Okay. They are all JR companies' trains. Okay. And also, these companies have the sub companies. Uh, for example, this one, TKJ, is the Tokai Transport Service Company. It's the sub company of the central JR company. Only one railway line, uh, about 11 kilometers long, and uh, have, there were six stations. Very small company. In Japan, there were many, many such very small railway companies. Uh, and most of them are the sub-companies of JR companies. And some of them are the private companies, private railway companies. Only one line, only several stations. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, in Japan, they also have the local railway companies. For example, this one, King Tetsu Corporation, like this in the central Japan, uh, Japanese area. Okay. This is another local railway company, Meitetsu, Nagoya Rail Railroad, uh, mainly connect the Nagoya airport and the downtown of Nagoya city. This one, Nagoya Linkai Kosoku Railway, connect the central part of Nagoya city and another city, only only one line. But the speed speed is a little high, but in my memory, it's about 100 kilometers per hour for this train. You can see in Japan, the common train, intercity train, is similar to metro train. In fact, they are the same. The same to metro train. But in China, we have different train wagons, but in Japan, the same. And wow, this is Tokyo. Tokyo rail transport map. Uh, in Tokyo, uh, uh, there were about 280 kilometers metro lines and over 
three thousand kilometers railway lines. Okay, these rail transport lines are responsible for the、mm, daily commuters of the residents in Tokyo for their work every day, and Tokyo Metro. Company here, you can see,、uh, is mainly responsible for the central part of the metro lines here. This part, railway. This part, metro. Okay. And in Osaka, this is the rail transport network in Osaka, in Japan. Osaka is municipal subway. This is Nagoya. Oh, this one is we call it Donicheko. Donicheko means、uh, metro ticket for a whole day. You can take all the trains as you like. The metro ticket, okay, for one day. <clears throat> And this one, huh, very special. Uh. Aichi Rapid Transit Company has this train. Okay, from where? Sorry, Linimo. From here to here. For the Expo 2005, I have explained in my previous PPT file. Okay, can you find the wheels for this train? Can you find the wheels? No wheels. Yes, like the Maglov, <laughs> but it's a low speed, about one hundred kilometers per hour. For the Expo two thousand five, imported from this, imported、uh, from, I think it's from Canada or, sorry, I forgot. <clears throat> And this one. Remember, guided bus. Remember this one. <laughs> this is the whole network of the guided bus from Ozone to Obata. Only for this part, it's guided from this, from here to here, and this part is common bus. Common bus. Running as common bus, but running as guided bus here. Okay. <clears throat> Until this time, you can see. Remember what I told you. Rail transport need levels. For the integrated rail transport network, it has different layers. Okay. For the layers of high speed for art rail, layers for the main transport corridor, the layers for local transport, they have different rail transport system combined together. Okay, combined together, and then there is a saying that Japan is a country on rail. American is a country on wheels. Okay, different integrated transport system need different energy consumption intensity. Remember, let me ask you one question: Why America? Why America has the wars with the countries? For example, of Iraq, the country in the in the country full of the petrol. Why? Because their integrated transport system has the backbone of private cars. Private car means more energy consumption, more consumption of oil. Yes. So they need wars to support the operation of their integrated transport. Okay, this is not the way of ours. We are developing countries. 
we have more people. Okay, for each people, we have less energy resource. So, American style is not our future. I think Japanese transport system, rail transport system, is for is suitable for our、uh, for our integrated transport system construction. Because if we can have the plenty of passenger transport supports, and then such system will have a very low energy consumption for each passenger. Okay, but remember, first of all, have adequate, strong passenger support. How land use, rational land use around each station. Rational planning of each line, rational planning of of our of our urban forms, regional development forms. Okay, <clears throat> and also the integration of intercity urban passenger transport, especially in metropolitan area. At last, we need to combine the intercity rail transport lines and the local. Rail transport lines together to have the integrated transport network. For each rail station, for each rail station, this is very important. Integration of rail transport and land use, comprehensive land use around each station means around each rail station we have the real estate development. Hotel, shopping center, bus route operation, tourist business, car rental business, and then this will increase the rail travel demand. Increase rail travel demand will make more railway lines, and we will have convenient rail transport. <laughs> convenient rail transport will improve the value of the land use around. A railway station. The improvement of the value of the lands around the railway station will attract, for example, government office, school, medical center, post office, library around the the railway station, and then this will increase again the rail travel demand. Increase the rail travel demand will make more convenient rail transport cars. More people take railway. Railway will earn money and to construct more railway lines, and then convenient convenient railway transport will improve the value again the land around the railway transport. At this time, don't forget railway around each railway station. The land use owned by whom around each railway station, the land, the land development, the land belongs to railway company. This is another important way to improve to increase the value of the infrastructure, the lands of a railway company. Okay, can you understand how to make the company rich? This is another way. This is also Japanese way. Okay, to rent the infrastructure, to rent the building, to, for example, the the supermarket, the library, the post office, to, to 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 to, to the bar around the the railway the railway station to earn more money for the railway company. And then utilize this money to build more road, to build more railway lines. Okay, this is a good circle. Okay, can you understand this this function? Because many of the railway companies lack of money. How to make money for more railway track lines? How this is how. Improve the land price. How to improve? Make mixed land use around each station. To invest 
on the development of the land use, not only the passenger transport. Okay, this is a change of the option. In normal old option, in our in our old option, railway company is only responsible for the transport of passenger. This is wrong. Railway company can also invest in the land use. For example, the real estate. For example, the supermarket. For example, the the the, the, the hotels around the station. Okay, to earn the money. Oh, sorry, to earn the money around along the、uh, along the railway lines. Okay, nowadays in Japan.、Uh, Passenger transport income is only about thirty percent of a railway company. More than half of the income of a railway company is from the land use development around each railway station. Can you understand? Utilize this money, this kind of money, and then railway company can. Invest on more railway construction. Okay, can you understand? This is very important. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Change your idea. Railway company is not only responsible for the transport of passengers or goods; it also has the function of the development of the lands around each station. To attract people here, to make people spend money here, and also take trains to come here. This way, they can support the large-scale population movements between cities and inside cities. Another case. Let's go to Sweden to check the case in Stockholm. Stockholm is the capital of Sweden.、Uh, it's here, I think. Here, Stockholm. <clears throat> Stockholm is made up of one peninsula and fourteen islands connected by more than seventy bridges.、Uh, this is Stockholm. Less than forty percent of all the residents in Stockholm live in the central urban area, and over sixty percent of them live in six satellite towns. Look at here. This is the center. This is downtown of Stockholm. Downtown Stockholm, and then different railway lines connect different subcenters. Remember the polycentric, polycentral urban form. Remember that I have introduced the polycentric, polycentral urban form. This is a very typical polycentral urban form. This is Stockholm, one city. One power center and six satellites, six subcenters, and for each centers, for each pair of centers, they are connected by railway lines. Okay, different centers are not combined. Okay, so Stockholm has seven city centers. Okay, the most sustainable urban form. This is core center. The metro lines connect the central area and the satellite towns. <coughs>、uh, this is the station inside one station of the <laughs> metro lines in Stockholm. Very beautiful, right? <laughs> the population of Stockholm is about、uh, oh, this is this is not right.、Uh, nowadays is is about one million, the Stockholm population. Okay, the total length of the metro lines in Stockholm is about 108 kilometers, and there were more than 100 metro stations like this. <clears throat> maybe you have watched the movie Ring Lord. Maybe you have some records of the Ring Lords. Yes, very beautiful. The urban planning regulations of Stockholm strictly regulate re require that the distances from public residential buildings 
to urban rail transit station must be no longer than 500 meters. This is a very strict law in Stockholm. If you want to build one public building, okay, within 500 meters to one metro station, or it is forbidden, okay? In this way, over 70% of the commuters in Stockholm take metro or other public trans transport modes, okay? Every day, over 70% of the trips is responsible by public travel modes, mainly the metro lines. Remember, <laughs> this is a developed country, okay? Very advanced, but most of people will use metro. No need for personal car. Yeah, no need. Rational urban form. Very efficient network, ne uh, metro network. Okay, <clears throat> in Japan, over 90. <laughs> Increases of both population and employment are guided to be moved to the centers of the satellite towns, which have compact and mixed urban land use developments. Remember what I told you? Look at this. Connect different centers, railway. Inside each center, bus and light rail and metro. And then mixed land use for each centers to help people work inside to decrease the movements between centers. Okay. We have the opportunities here. We live here. And then it is unnecessary for me to move to the other center. Okay? <clears throat> Stockholm is the very typical polycenter urban form. Okay. And until today, Stockholm is still regarded as the most sustainable city in the world since 1990s. It reduces the commuting travel demand to the central urban, urban area of Stockholm, which also makes a reasonable amount of people living in the central urban area commute to the satellite towns. Okay. As a result, the metro commuting passengers flows from and to the central urban area of Stockholm are relatively equal to each other. In other words, every day somebody in the morning, we'll move to the satellite towns to work, and somebody will move to the central area. They are almost equal, and not much. The, the passenger flows are not that much more, okay? <clears throat> Cause the mixed land use in each satellite towns and make people move guide people to move equally to different directions. To avoid the case, for example, in, in, in the morning in Beijing, everybody get into the city center. And for the road, leaving the city center to the suburban area, almost nobody. In the evening, we have the reverse case. In Stockholm, they avoid such case, okay? Next, the land use and for the guidance of the passenger flows. Okay, this is the case in Sweden. Remember this. This is the base of all the sustainable behaviors. This. All the public buildings must be built within 500 meters of a metro station to make people utilize metro lines, railway lines as much as possible. To make their lives, to make their lives free of cars. Okay? 
but uh, still, uh, until today, we don't have such a law. Wow. It's very useful. Okay, land uses along urban rail transit lines, the case in U.S. Maybe somebody will say that U.S., public transport, no, it's not good, but it's good in its residential area building. This mass rapid transit residential community. In many big cities, people in America, in U.S., build such community. A MRT residential community with a rational scale is developed within a short distance, usually 500 to 550 meters away from one or more MRT stations, including the metro station, BRT station. Okay. <clears throat> this is also a very sustainable idea for the community construction. Okay. Intensively mix the land use of MRT residential community is equal to make the residents able to complete uh, most of their daily activities through walking, bicycle, bus, and other public trail modes. For example, you live in this community. You can complete over 90% of your daily activities within this community. If you want to get out, Okay, go out to do something. Then you can find the MRT station within 500 meters or 550 meters. It means you can walk there within eight minutes. Okay. <clears throat> the last case of the land use of the long uh, urban rail transit lines, Hong Kong of China. Uh, this is Hong Kong very intensive land use area. But first of all, I need to tell you that the developed land in Hong Kong is only about 16% of the whole area of Hong Kong, okay? In order to protect the environment. For other over 80% of the lands, they are grass land, forest land, cultivated land, water land, reservoirs, reservoirs and others. Okay, <clears throat> only within this you know, about seventeen percent of the land that they developed the Hong Kong urban area. First characteristic uh, about the land use in Hong Kong is the intensive land use in multi centers. Okay, Hong Kong has at least three city centers. Okay, first compact construction, very compact, to improve walking ac ac accessibilities. Make the buildings compact with each other, very near to each other. People can ac uh, access each building on the street, uh, utilize the bridge connecting different uh, buildings, and also the tunnels underground. High densities of land uses also support the public transport operation. Curse Many people gather, work, have their activities, entertainments within a very high, uh, highly developed land. Buses are very useful for each people here. If you drive your car here, you can find that there is no way for you. If you take a bus in Hong Kong, it's very convenient. Remember what I say in London? Remember this one? <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> this one? Strong center? Hong Kong is a very typical of strong center. Inside the urbanized area, the main urbanized area, public travel mode is the most convenient because many, many people are gathered here. Okay, it's the best way to develop a public transport. But in Hong Kong, because it's a <clears throat> city near the sea, it's not very good for to, to, to develop too many metro lines. So buses here are the most popular.
The third, the third characteristic of intensive land use is that <coughs> the interconnect multi-layered land uses. You can see different buildings are connected, uh, as I have explained. For example, you can use the bridges, you can use the, 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 the road, you can also use the ground and the, ground, the, the, the tunnels underground. And sometimes you can even find that this, for example, this is the gate of this building, but it is also the exit of the metro station. In other words, metro station has a metro station in Hong Kong has many exits, many exits and many entrances combined together with the gate of different buildings. You go to you go into a building. At the same time, you go into a station of the metro line, okay, to facilitate public transport. <clears throat> and also, you, if you want to go to this building, and also you want to go to the the metro, go into the metro station inside the building. From other building, you can use the bridge, you can use the rail, you can use the tunnels and the ground, as you like. Another point of the land use of priority in Hong Kong is the mixed land use in building comprehensive community. Similar to the case in US, okay, for the mass rapid transit community. <clears throat> Here, in this way, it reduces the travels outside the community. For example, here, uh, this is a case. Let's see here first. Areas of various land uses in Kulung City community. This is a community in Hong Kong. Let's see the land use types here. Residential, about 40%. Com commercial inside this community is about 13%. Green space and roads, about 30%. Entertainment, 1%. And others, about 10%. It means that for your daily life, it is necessary for you to go outside this community. If you want to go outside this community, then you must, you must have something very important to deal with. Okay? <clears throat> In this way, long distance, very tiring, very exhausting trips are avoided. Okay? This is because of the law in Hong Kong. The area of each land use type in the community should be no larger than two-thirds of the total area of the whole community. Okay, remember this is another law in Hong Kong. Remember the law in, in Stockholm? 500 meters, okay, near to the metro station. Here in Hong Kong, for each community, in other words, in Hong Kong, for each community, you cannot build this community for all the buildings for residential, all the buildings for commercial, all the buildings for factories. No, sorry, no. For each community, one type of land use can never exceed about 70%. Okay? In this way, we can provide working opportunities local, in local, to avoid people going outside this community to work, okay? <clears throat> and another very successful actions in Hong Kong is the rail transit construction plus real estate development. In other words, for each railway station with a radius of, sorry, I forgot the number, with a radius about several hundred meters around each railway station, the land use is developed by the railway company. It must be developed by railway company. For example, here, this is a railway uh, station. This building for residential, 
is developed by the railway company. Must be developed by, constructed by the railway company. In this way, we have a very good point. What is, what is that? Remember, if you are if you are the manager of the railway company, you know the transport capacity of this station. And then, if you want to build a uh, build this building for commercial or for residential, you will consider, well, how many rooms I should have here, and how many people will be gathered here, and uh, I need to predict I need to forecast the passenger travel demand. Is it big or small in comparison to the transport capacity of this station I have to make them appropriate to each other? Never make too small building make the transport capacity waste or too big building too many people waiting outside the station. Okay? In this way, we can match the public transport capacity with the land use type, scale, and intensity. Okay? Can you understand? Can you? Only the railway company knows what kind of transport capacity I can provide. And if I develop the lands around the station, I know how big should the building is, should the building be, okay? Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> but uh, in other area of China, we don't have such actions, okay. <clears throat> Also, the rail uh, transit construction and the plus the real estate development also improved walking accessibilities. You can see the bridges like this. And the, this is one metro station in Hong Kong. You see the buildings around are developed by this company and the axis goes directly into the buildings and the ground or by utilizing the bridges. Okay, to make them integrated, integrate transport and work, integrate transport and living. Okay, <clears throat> this is not not important. But Hong Kong of China trips the ratios of different trial modes. You can see here, Hong Kong private trial modes only about nine percent. Only about nine percent of people will drive their cars. About 74% of people will use the public trail modes, including the bus and metro. About 17% of people will walk or ride bicycle. Okay, this 9% people are very rich, <laughs> very, very rich. <laughs> For common people, they will use this. Okay, Tokyo. Mm -hmm. This, mm, I think this is low. <clears throat> okay, let's check the case in Beijing. You see, this is the case in Beijing. Here is a metro station. It is morning peak hour. People are waiting outside this station to get into the station to go out of this community to work. Why? Because this community is only for residential. The land use here only for residential. No commercial, no entertainments, no others. Too intensive development of usually simple types of land uses around rail transit stations with inadequate capacities will make this case. We need to avoid. Okay, land use decide transport attributes. Too intensive, simple type. Okay, 
will decide and the inadequate transport capacity will make people wait every day. Okay. Low accessibility. You see, here is another metro station. Very dangerous. Okay. Curse. The bridge is here. And it's too long for people to walk into the station and walk outside the station. Okay. Low accessibility. Long distance of walking from buildings or bus stops to rail transit stations and much influence upon walking. This is another case we need to avoid. And this also, this is an, another case we have made the mistake. <clears throat> How about in your country? Similar to Japan or Sweden or US or Hong Kong of China or Beijing of China? Which one? Which one? Tell me. In Japan? Oh, Beijing. <laughs> Beijing. <laughs> In Japan, multi integrated rail transport networks. Sweden, very strict law and very rational urban form. Okay. US. Mass rapid transit and residential community, Hong Kong, many land use will good experiences, especially the rail transit construction plus real estate development, all responsible by the railway company, mainland of China, Beijing. Wow, too intensive development, simple types of land use, low accessibility. Okay, now we are making effort to, 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 to change this, but I'm afraid it's too late. I'm afraid it's too late, but we still have chance. We still have chance to change, make more stations, more lines, more stations, to change the transport capacity, to improve the transport capacity at the same time develop more types of land use to make people work in local. Okay. <clears throat> this is how <laughs> I told you. Okay, the first part. Since the passengers are from and to the land uses around each railway station, then what kind of land uses we should focus on, especially very important, okay? Then we need to know the passengers coming into or going out of an urban rail transit station and land uses in its surrounding area. Passengers coming into or going out of an urban rail transit station in different time periods are determined by the types, scales, and intensities of the land uses within a certain area around the station, a certain area in different countries, this distance is different, okay? Stops of other public transport modes, taxi parking area, bicycle infrastructure, etc., in such an area should be considered as independent types of the land uses. First stop is some kind of very special land uses. Parking laws for taxi, parking area for taxi, for bicycle. Okay, they are all very special land use types around a railway station. Because many of the passengers will come or to these kind of places. <clears throat> According to the various purposes of the rail trips, the important time periods usually include morning rush hour, non peak hour evening rush hour, and some specific time periods, okay? <clears throat> Let's check one by one. <clears throat> Passengers coming into a station 
in morning rush hour. Okay, let's imagine、uh, you work in a railway station. Okay, in morning rush hour, where are people from around this station? Okay. In other words, what kind of land use types? What kind of lands I should watch out? I should focus on to forecast the the number of the passengers who are coming into my station. Okay, we need to focus on the residential land use around the station, parking area around the station, bicycle infrastructure around the station, bus stops. Around the station. Okay, why? People living around will use the railway station every morning to go to work. Very likely, parking area. Somebody will ride or drive their cars here, park their car or their bicycles here. Bicycle infrastructure, and then transfer. To railway, bus stops. Maybe somebody or many people will get a bus and make interchange to railway. Okay, <clears throat> so we need to know the residential land use for the number of households. How many households are around this station? How big is the parking area around the station? How big is the bicycle infrastructure around the station? The arriving frequency of buses in the morning peak hour around the station. Only in this way, we can forecast how many people will come into this station in the morning rush hour. Okay. Do you agree? Do you? <clears throat> we need to focus on these numbers, okay? And then we can forecast, and then we can we 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 can provide proper transport capacity, okay? Not much more, not less, okay? <clears throat> Okay, passengers going out of a station in morning rush hour. Where are these people going to? They get off the train. They will go to the places around the station for commercial, for educational, for industrial. Okay, to work, to go to school, to work. To the office around the station, to the taxi parking area around the station. Maybe somebody will get up the train and take a bus, take a taxi. Okay, to the bicycle infrastructure, to the bus stops, interchange to bus, to interchange bicycle. Okay, around the station. This determines the number of the passengers get up the trains, getting up the trains, and to the places they want to go. Then we need to know what we need to know the number of the employments around a railway station for commercial land use, educational land use, industrial land use, and office spaces. And we also need to know the bicycle infrastructure area. How big for the bus stop around the station? If we want to know how many people will get of the get out of the station here from this railway station, then we need to know the departing frequency of buses in morning rush hour. For the people make interchange from railway to bus. Okay, <clears throat> passengers coming into a station in evening rush hour. It is unnecessary for me to explain. 
the number of people in evening rush hour coming into a station is the number of people going out of a station in morning rush hour. Then, in the evening rush hour, we need to know the number of the employments around each railway station. <clears throat> and then we, we, we can know how many people will get in in evening rush hour to the station. Okay? And the parking area for the bus stops, the arriving frequency of buses. In this way, we can forecast the number of passengers coming into the station in evening rush hour. In evening rush hour, going out of the station, this, these are the people going back home in evening rush hour, in, in morning rush hour, right? <clears throat> then we need to know the number of households around the station and the infrastructure area and the departing frequency of buses. Only in these four steps, we can exactly know how big capacity we should have, what kind of transport capacity we should provide for each station, okay? <clears throat> Another case, passengers coming into or going out of a station in non-peak hour. This is the scales and the intensities of different types of land uses within the nearby area of a station should be considered according to the comprehensive circumstances especially for the special time periods. For example, oh, maybe next week is your national day. Am I right? Next uh, Monday? Yeah, next Monday. Okay, it's a national day on the 14th, yes. It is a specific time period. Passengers coming into or going out of a station in specific time periods. Scales and the intensities of specific types of the land uses within the nearby area of a station should be considered according to specific circumstances. For example, <clears throat> in the Chinese Spring Festival, this is the case in Beijing Railway Station. And what, prep, what kind of preparation we should do because of the holiday? This one, it's very near to, wow, to a very big shopping mall in Beijing, especially for some big sale time period, many, too many passengers for the metro station. And what kind of preparation should the metro station do? This one, in Tiananmen Square, every morning, four o'clock, okay, for the flag rising, the Chinese national flag rising, okay, what kind of preparation we should do? Okay, these are the specific time periods. We need to focus on different, very different land use types around. At the same time, consider the characteristics of the time. Okay? <clears throat> so, what I want to tell you at this, the fourth part is land use determine the number of the passengers, especially for a railway station, you need to focus on the land use type, land use scale, land use intensities, because they will determine the travel demand in different peak hours and specific time periods. You need to forecast exactly the passengers' numbers to provide proper transport capacities. You, if you provide more, it will be a waste. If you provide less, and then people will be not satisfied, okay? <clears throat> okay. Ah, to Miss Celeste, let's have some summary. 
in order to have high efficiency of the rail transit oriented development first <clears throat> we need to regulate the uh, utilization type development intensity and the indispensable environment infrastructure of each plot of the land in each block this is the experience from remember which country <clears throat> Regulate the utilization type, development intensity, and indispensable environment infrastructure. For example, you need to have adequate parking lots. You need to have uh, very limitation of the height of the building. Not Hong Kong, <laughs> US. Remember, many laws like this. Okay? If it is apartment, 60 feet high, no higher. Okay, plenty of parking lots. And according to the transport capacity, then you have the number of the division of the uh, construction area divided by the area. Okay, this is experience from US. The second, integrate intercity and urban passenger transports, especially in metropolitan areas multi-layers of different types of rail transport network to connect the intercity and the inside and the rail transport inside the city. Which country? Remember this one? 